Welcome to Virginia Time Travel, your portal to the Commonwealth's past, present, and future. Our guest today is popular Civil War historian William Connery. Um, William was here last year to talk about uh, the early days of the Civil War in Northern Virginia, and he's back again this year to talk about another fascinating book that he's written. This one is about Mosby's raids in Civil War Northern Virginia. Welcome back to the show, Bill. Thank you. So, <clears throat> for those who don't know, just who was John Singleton Mosby? Well, John Singleton Mosby, as you mentioned, is a very interesting character. He was born in 1833 in Virginia, a place called Powhatan, about 30 miles west of Richmond. When he was a young man, his family moved to the Charlottesville area and he attended um, University of Virginia, got kicked out in his third year when uh, a bully attacked him and John pulled out what was called a pepper box pistol, shot the bully in the neck, wounded him, didn't kill him. Still, Mosby got sent to jail for a year and while he was in jail, he s was so appreciative I guess if that's the right word, of the person who put him away, that he said, I want to become a lawyer. <laughs> so he, as they said, he read the law. He didn't go to law school. He read the law, hung out a, a shingle actually um, on the border with uh, Tennessee in, uh, in Virginia. So when the Civil War came, he volunteered as a private didn't go to West Point, no military training. In the course of the war, he changed, especially cavalry tactics, rose to the rank of colonel. And after the war, he lived another 50 years and led quite an amazing life after the war. So the war breaks out. Where is he when the war breaks out? Well, he, as I mentioned, he's... Um, doing his law practice. And, and, and where, was he, where was he practicing? He on? was, uh, oh gosh, on, like I said, on, in southwest Virginia. Okay. On the border. And uh, he was a strong unionist, similar to Robert E. Lee. And actually, when South Carolina and the Deep South started leaving the Union, there was a... Uh, editorial in a local paper saying, you know, Virginia should do this. Virginia should leave the Union. And Mosby, who was a well-known lawyer there, said, if anybody is thinking of leaving the Union, I've got a nice piece of rope, <laughs> meaning he, he would hang anybody. But uh, once Virginia left, he uh, threw in his lot with the, the Union. He had just been married three or four years. He left his wife and uh, two small children behind and joined the cavalry. Okay, so he gets to Northern Virginia. How does he get to Northern Virginia? Well, they, uh, they ride 18 days from uh, Southwest Virginia to Richmond. Uh, they're in camp in Ashland. They go from Ashland to the Shenandoah Valley and it's there that he meets his future commander, uh, Jeb Stewart. And from there, he goes with uh, Stewart's troops down to Manassas, takes part in first Manassas. When the Union troops are driven all the way to Alexandria, he is a Confederate scout around Fairfax. Uh, when the troops leave in early 1862, he <coughs> goes down to the peninsula and takes part in the fighting there. Okay, so now, you know, at First Manassas you hear a lot about the Black Horse Cavalry. Was he part of that or? No, this, the Black Horse Cavalry was a, um, another group out of Warrington, which is where Mosby lived after the war, but the, they were called that because at least the beginning of the war, they used uh, black horses, and at one point Lee said that those were his best 
cavalry troops. And later on, when Mosby formed his rangers, some of the Black Horse did uh, become his rangers. Well, and of course, this is why Mosby, you know, is kind of remembered. It's because of his, you know, rangers. Now, what was the Partisan Ranger Act exactly? Well, in April 1862, the Confederate Congress, now everybody has to remember that the Confederate government was set up like a mirror image. You had a president, a vice president, a Senate, a House of Representatives, everything except there was no Supreme Court. But in the Confederate Congress, they passed what was called the uh, Partisan uh, Ranger Act, which said that under proper supervision, rangers were a part of the Confederate forces, but when they captured horses, when they captured arms or cattle, instead of just handing it over to the Confederate Army, they could get paid, they could get reimbursed for what they uh, captured. So this in interested Mosby a lot, and by January 1863, he convinced Jeb Stewart that he could have his own uh, pretty much individual command in Northern Virginia. So this was kind of um, like a guerrilla force, kind of like Francis Marion, the yes. Swamp Fox during the Revolution. Um, but now the men under him, did they actually have military rank or? Oh yes. It, it, it was the 43rd Battalion of uh, Virginia Cavalry. Um, as I mentioned, Mosby reached the rank of full colonel. He had the uniform, the stars on it. He had uh, men under him who were lieutenant colonels, majors, captains, lieutenants, all the way down to private. So um, they could uh, get arms and things from the Confederate army, but most of the time they use the arms, the goods that they captured in their raids. Well, the reason I asked is because I guess the Union, you know, didn't really consider them to be soldiers. I mean... No. They were uh, actually at one point, um, U.S. Grant told of, uh, General Sheridan, where any of Mosby's men are caught, hang them without trial, and uh, up near Front Royal, this happened in September 1864, that some of Mosby's men were, were captured, a Union man had been shot, the cavalry, Union cavalry said he was shot in cold blood, Mosby men said the, the, he wasn't. Um, Sheridan's troops eventually killed, um, executed seven of Mosby's men, Mosby retaliated by uh, taking out seven of uh, Sheraton's captured troops, hanging three of them, and uh, shooting two. Two other men escaped, and he wrote to Sheraton and he said, measure to measure. If you stop killing my men, I will stop killing your men. But uh, as a general rule, they treated the partisan rangers as if they were uh, some like common criminals. Now, I mean, part of the problem was they kind of, when they would go on their raids, and I understand, you know, they attacked a lot of the uh, ring of picket uh, detachments, whatever you want to call it, circle Washington. But after the raids, they would just kind of blend back into the population, kind of like the Viet Cong during yeah. the Vietnam War. As a matter of fact, uh, after the war, Mosby, called his men uh, the children of the mist, that uh, his tactics were to attack quickly. After a while, after his, his, one of his first raids, he used sabers, which was the normal cavalry tactic. After that raid, he said, a saber is only good for roasting meat and, and whacking a recalcitrant mule. Use the revolver. But the thing is, the, the revolvers they used most of the time were what were called cap and ball, which means each cylinder had to be loaded individually. You had to put a uh, percussion cap six times. But once you load it up, you got six shots here, you got six shots 
here. Usually when they went through the Union lines, they would hold the reins in their teeth and just fire away before the Union men with their sabers uh, could reach them. So that's how Mosby uh, changed uh, cavalry tactics. Wow, must have been pretty good riders. Yeah. <laughs> Reminds you of that old John Wayne movie, True Grit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you know, we often hear about <clears throat> Mosby's Confederacy. This is kind of the area that he operated in. So what was Mosby's Confederacy? <clears throat> well, basically it was um, Fauquier, Loudon, um, Clark, the um, counties to the north and west of uh, Washington, D.C. He raided into Maryland. He also raided uh, into what is now West Virginia, into the Shenandoah. At the time of the Battle of, Mer of uh, Gettysburg, while Lee's main forces was heading towards Gettysburg, Mosby raided up to Mercersburg, Pennsylvania. That's the farthest he got from Northern Virginia. But his most famous raids uh, that he made his name were actually right uh, in Fairfax County. Well, now that you've mentioned that, <laughs> we should mention his most ex extraordinary exploit. Well, the, the, as we say, the, the raid that made Mosby famous. He started his partisan activities January 1863. He came to the attention of a uh, um, what I can call a British mercenary, uh, uh, Colonel Sir Percy Wyndham. And Sir Percy was head of a uh, Union Cavalry troop at Fairfax Courthouse. And Sir Percy said, ah, there's this Mosby man out there. He's, uh, he's stealing horses. He's a common horse thief. And Mosby said, well, maybe I am a horse thief, but any horse I stole had a man on it. And that man had a pistol and a carbine and a saber. So, so Mosby told his men, we're going to go into Fairfax Courthouse. We're going to capture Sir Percy. So 2 a.m., March 9th, uh, the middle of the night, they managed to get into Fairfax Courthouse. They go to where Sir Percy is, and he's gone to Washington. But they find out about a block away is where the, the general in charge, where he lives. So they go there. Mosby knocks on the door. A lieutenant is on guard. He opens a window and, you know, what's going on? And Mosby says, sir, we have an important dispatch for the general from the 5th New York Cavalry. Now Mosby's discovered that the 5th New York, he doesn't say, I am Mosby, but uh, he, he uses subterfuge. The lieutenant comes down, opens the door, and then Mosby is there with his revolver. Take me to the general. The general has had a big party. He's dead drunk asleep. Mosby pulls up his uh, uh, bedclothes and whacks him on the butt. And that wakes him up. And the general is all harumphing and, sir, what is the meaning of this? And Mosby says, yes, sir. Have you heard of Mosby? And the general responds, of course I have. Have you got him? And Mosby says, no, sir. I am Mosby, and I have got you. Get up and get dressed. So Mosby captures a general, about four officers, 30 men, but most important of all, 58 horses. And this is uh, uh, reported to uh, President Lincoln, and President Lincoln responds, eh, I can make another general with my signature but it's mighty hard to make a good horse. <laughs> so he was more interested in uh, losing all those horses and uh, just, just losing a brigadier general. Well, that's a great story. Um, it's interesting <laughs> that you had this Englishman over here fighting for the Union, but I understand uh, Mosby had some Englishmen fighting for him. <laughs> oh, he had Englishmen, he had uh, uh, Prussians, Irish, Welsh, um, Italian uh, people from all over the world. From uh, He had one company of his uh, raiders who were from, Mar they were called the Maryland Dan, I think it was Company D, known as the Maryland Dandies. That was another thing when they, 
when they captured horses and things, they oftentimes used the, the money to, to, to buy themselves resplendent uniforms and try to get the best horses, have the, the best firearms. Wow. Well, you know, it was certainly a, a gritty war. I mean, <laughs> the things that you were saying about the, um, the hanging certainly bring that yeah. home. But there's certainly some romance connected, with, at least with, with Mosby and the cavalry. I mean, these guys seem to be very, very dashing. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, he, he said, if I had kept my men in a camp, we probably would have been easily captured. He had a good relationship with the civilian population. Most of the population, except for parts of Loudoun County, were favorable to the South and the Confederacy. So Mosby would set up uh, deals with uh, keeping his men scattered, and then he would have his scouts. He would scout an area himself, find out where a train was coming through, where there were sutler wagons. It's reported sometimes even Mosby himself would dress up in dungarees and a regular shirt walk in, buy a piece of cake, and strike up a con You know, how many wagons you got here? Uh, are are there the many cavalry around here? He would size up the wagons and then 3 o'clock in the morning show up and uh, capture those wagons. But keeping his men separate and also keeping control of them, I'm pretty sure he'd, he would go to a house and say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I know your son is off fighting down near Richmond, but can you, can you keep my man here? And I know you've got some lovely daughters, so keep an eye. And if my men do anything untoward about your daughters, you tell me, and he would dismiss them. He, as, he, as they say nowadays, he kept a very clean ship. And as I understand it, there are some romantic tales of women sending him messages about the Yankees about to oh, capture yeah. him and things like that? I mean, um, probably the most famous was Laura Ratcliffe. Uh, my friend uh, Chuck Morrow has written a book about Laura. And even Mosby, after the war, he said, uh, one day a Yankee lieutenant come, came to see Miss Laura and said, ah, we set up a trap for your pet, that Mosby fellow. And it's, the fields are all muddy, we know you can't tell him, being boastful. As soon as the lieutenant left, Laura went out another way, and she just happened to come across Mosby, told him of the trap, and he later wrote, if it hadn't been for Laura Ratcliffe, I would have been captured or even killed at that time. Um, now, listening to all these stories and exploits, if I suddenly got excited and wanted to go to sites associated with Mosby, how would I go about doing that? Well, all over uh, Northern Virginia, there's uh, sites, like I mentioned, the, the, the house where Mosby captured the Union General is still there. It's the rectory for the Truro Anglican Church. And uh, two years ago, I, I took a photo. It's now like the uh, Parsons office if you go to Rose Hill, um, I live in Bush Hill, across the road near Thomas Edison High School is Rose Hill, and that, that was a famous raid. Mosby went there with three of his men, and they captured the uh, lieutenant governor of what was called um, Restored or Yankee Virginia, a uh, colonel, Colonel uh, Daniel French Delaney. Now, it just so happened, one of the men with Mosby was a young private whose name was French Delaney. It just so happened that the son helped capture his father. So we talk about the Civil War as being a war of brothers against brothers. It was also a, a war of uh, fathers against son. Herndon Station uh, is where M Mosby's men Sometimes it was ridiculous. They, they attacked there on St. Pat called the St. Patrick's Day Raid. They went into this house. There were four horses out front. They knew 
by the horses that they were officers' horses. Went in the house, there was lunch set up, but nobody was there. One of Mosby's men went to the attic and shouted, come down! Nothing happened. He took out his revolver and shot in the attic, and immediately three Union officers come down with their hands at, up, and the fourth officer falls through, through the plaster in the ceiling. Um, and where I am the, do I am the docent at the uh, Mosby House Museum up in Warrington, which is where Mosby lived uh, after the war, and um, every uh, Friday and Saturday I'm there to, uh, to give tours, and this is a house where he lived with his family, and his uh, wife died in this house. Also, Mosby, his and his wife's grave are in the cemetery in Warrington. Why did he settle in Warrington after the war? <clears throat> I'm not sure. I'm still, there's a lot of things about Mosby. Um, I'm still investigating, and, but for some reason he uh, liked Warrington. I made a motion to the directors there that uh, uh, how maybe we should call Warrington the, uh, the unofficial capital of Mosby's Confederacy. <laughs> But uh, the only thing I found was that Mosby said that the, uh, the nicest summers he ever spent were in Warrington. Now, we were talking earlier, uh, before the show started, about Mosby's ongoing significance, um, you know, even the modern warfare. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Oh, yeah. Well, Mosby lived about 50 years after the war ended. He wrote himself half a dozen books, including his own reminiscences. He, uh, um, after the war, Mosby, the Confederate raider, he gets his, um, I want to say, get out of jail free card from General Grant, who was his avowed enemy during the war. And because of this, Mosby not only becomes a supporter of Grant, Mosby uh, is the Virginia head of Grant's reelection in 1872, and one of Mosby's famous quotes was, hell is being a Republican in Virginia. 1876, Mosby's wife dies in Warrenton. The same year, somebody takes a shot at Mosby at the train station, and by 1877, Mosby's moved to Washington, and by 1879, Mosby is the U.S. Consul to Hong Kong. Spends six years in Hong Kong, cleaning up the mess there, comes back to the States, and becomes a lawyer for the Southern Pacific Railroad, lives in California 15 years. It is there that he meets a young man, and Mosby, kind of takes a liking to this young man. They ride out together. Mosby tells him his stories from the war, and mainly he tells this young man, you always have to attack, go forward, never retreat. And this young man grows up, goes to VMI West Point. When he knew Mosby, he was known as Georgie. Most of us today know this gentleman as uh, the famous tank commander of World War II, General George S. Patton, and we believe that the tactics he used using tanks as iron cavalry, he must have got some of those ideas from Mosby. There was a young, another young British lieutenant fighting in the Sudan in the 1890s. He read Mosby, and he said, it's because of Mosby I survived this battle. I put away my saber and I took out my pistol and used it in the Battle of Omdurman. And we don't know how history might have been changed if young Lieutenant Winston Churchill had uh, been killed in that battle. Uh, in 1992, the U.S. Army Rangers uh, gave a medal to Mosby, and Mosby was one of the first inductees into the Army Ranger Hall of Fame. And a few months ago, I had an Army Ranger come to the house in Warrington, and he said, 
Yeah, we, we still appreciate and follow uh, Mosby's um, partisan tactics. Well, William, this is absolutely <laughs> fascinating. The book is Mosby's Raids in Civil War Northern Virginia, available at uh, Amazon, I guess. And, and Barnes and & Noble and History Press. It's the same publisher as my first book. Right. Thank you for joining us on Virginia Time Travel, and uh, please visit us at www.timetravel21.com, and I'll see you next time.